Hi there and welcome to John's Watch Joint. Now today I'm going to go back and I'm going to review a Steel Dive 1970. Of course it's an homage to a watch that was made very famous by Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now when he was wearing the famous Captain Willard which was the Seiko 6105 and this watch is an homage to it. There are of course many other homages out there. You've seen I've done some Raduni videos as well which I really do like. Now the reason for reviewing this watch is simply because I've seen a lot more people reviewing this watch over the last couple of months and they're all seeing it's getting better and better and it represents the best value for money dive watch you can get on AliExpress. And of course here is the watch in question. Now you'll notice it's still got the tags on it and I've not actually resized it, I've not had it on my wrist, I've not timed it, I've not done anything with this watch simply because it's going back. Now, I'll tell you why in a minute, but I'll just go through some of the specifications first of all, so you know what you're dealing with. Now, as you've seen in the intro shots there, it comes very well packed in its own box, and you shouldn't have any problems with packaging with this watch, so it should come well protected. It's the SD1970. I got this from the Steel Dive store on AliExpress. It cost me £82 delivered. That was inclusive of all fees to the UK. Of course, this is a 6105 Captain Willard homage watch. It's made of C16L stainless steel, including the case back and the crown. The movement is the Venerable Seiko NH35. The diameter is 44 millimeters. The lug to lug is 48 millimeters, not just under 47. And I'll show you in the top right corner there, it is 48 millimeters. And the lug width is a standard 20 millimeters. The thickness is 13.5 millimeters and it comes with a unidirectional 120 click rotating bezel with a ceramic insert. It's 190 grams as supplied weight wise and it's got 200 meters of claimed water resistance. Uh, as we said it has a, a screw down crown and it's got a screw down case back. It does have luminescence on it, it's got C3 Super Luminova and the sapphire comes with clear AR coating and there's a mixture of brushed and polished finishes on this watch. So let's get into the watch now and find out what the problems are with this. Now first things first, whenever I receive a package, no matter where it's from, I check the outside of it, make sure it's got no severe bashes or knocks or dents in it, and then I'll open up the package. I'll then check to see the goods. Now when it comes to watches, they usually come ceram wrapped, they have a box and inside the box it'll come ceram wrapped full of plastic, and usually they'll come with the bezel kind of on the 12 or around about the 12 and you can usually tell there and then if it's aligned or not and if you can see it through the ceram wrap and it's really badly misaligned you've got a choice to make can you accept that are you willing to try and fiddle with it yourself and get it fixed or are you just going to return it straight away that's tip number one but whenever you see one like this this is how this one arrived i had it sitting over here between the 5 and the 10 2 I knew there was going to be a problem with this watch. So if I just rotate this just now, this is not a test of the bezel, I'm just going to rotate this quickly for you just now, and I'll bring the camera in quite close here, and you'll see here, yeah, that is half a minute to the right, quite clearly, and then when you turn it, it's way to the left. It's just really, really bad. I might have returned it too far to the left there, but it's basically half and half. So half a minute, right or left, means it's going to be half a minute out. It's pretty poor yeah so there's the half a minute to the right and there's the other one half a minute to the left it's really quite bad that one it's actually pointing straight down the left side of that indice there and that indice also is also skewed down to the left hand side so that starts me looking at other items of alignment so i then start checking so i then go to the six now if you look down at the six there you'll see the six o'clock mark of that rectangle that's not aligned either You'll see the extremities of that. It's outside the 31 minute marker to the left and it's inside the 29 minute marker to the right. So we have got alignment issues on this watch and I can tell straight away that the number seven isn't right either. It's skewed that way, just a fraction. So those I can live with, that I'm not I'm not enamored with, but that I just that just annoys the hell out of me. So next thing I check the actual bezel itself, does it? rotate properly and this one has got a lovely feeling bezel and there's no back plate so is it something you can live with you shouldn't have to live with it it's one of those things Seiko get reprimanded for it all the time other guys know that Seiko get reprimanded all the time and they should be fixing it themselves so that's a red flag so then you start to look at the rest of the watch you start to have a look at it so we've taken all the ceram wrap off what are we looking at you can see straight away there that there are marks on this. Now that tells me there's something sticky going on with this link. And I've had a go at trying to free off this link before they sent it. And lo and behold, 
it's a sticky link. It's quite sticky in there. And they've obviously tried to free it off and have caused damage to that. So you then go to the other side just to check and you can see exactly the same thing. So this is straight out of the packaging, unworn. So you can see straight away, this is not a brand new watch. It's not free of flaws. So you've got some decisions to make here. Next obvious place is to look down the bracelet to see what's going on. And apart from finger marks on here where I've been playing with it to see what's going on with it, there's nothing on the actual bracelet itself. However, when it comes to this clasp, it's hard to open. And as you can see right there, something's been going on with that. And you can see it's a little bit bent here. And when you try to close this over, it is not happy at all. So they've been fettling with this, trying to get this to work prior to sending it out. They've been trying to sort this link prior to sending it out. It's misaligned on the bezel and at number six. So we've got a few issues going on with this watch, which is not good enough. But the PS to the resistance is, and what I'll do is I'll just take the watch out of the way here now to the bottom left. I'll bring in a graphic to the top right, and you can see what's going on with the crown in this watch. Yeah, to anyone watching that last clip there, it was as bad as it sounds. The feeling is actually even worse. You can actually feel that crown grinding in there. The only thing I can think of is that the movement is actually squint inside the case, and that means that the gap where the, the actual uh, crown tube and the stem come out, it's not got enough room to clear, and it's catching on one side. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to fiddle with that. So the situation is just now, I have contacted Steel Dive, and they have agreed to a return and refund. But wait till you get this. I'll have to send the thing back myself, and that would cost me £35. Now, anyone should know that under a consumer law, you have rights, so under the Consumer Rights Act 2015, if you receive something that's not as described, it's not fit for its purpose, or it has flaws, and that's the important part, then you're entitled to a full refund, including postage costs. So I'm not paying £35 for this thing to go back. Uh, I'm waiting to see what happens with that. So we'll see uh, what happens over the next couple of days. I'm going to keep requesting a returns label. If they don't send me a returns label, I will then escalate it. And if it comes to it, I will then escalate it to PayPal. So it's an £85 watch at the moment, which is basically a chain around my neck. So these are the things that you sometimes have to go through when you're dealing with AliExpress. And I would say that out of 45 or so watches I've ordered this year so far, I've had about eight or nine problematic ones. That's quite a high score, but they've been niggly problems and they've all been resolved. But at the moment, I've got two or three, including this one, that are not quite so niggly and uh, I'm trying to resolve them just now. And in each case, obviously, I shall let you know what's going on. But remember, you've got consumer law behind you and as long as you're doing your due diligence, you're not losing the head, you keep at them, then usually you'll get a good score out of it. So we shall see what happens with this one. Uh, I shall show you the loom shot for this watch just now. And anyone who knows Steel Dive knows they have a very good loom and there's no exception to the rule here. Um, I would say that uh, from the first Steel Dive watches that I've seen, there's certainly a step up obviously in the bezel inserts and the hand quality definitely seems to be a little better. Um, as far as the case is concerned, the uh, polishing on it seems to be fine and the brushing around the top of the case is a rudimentary circular brush and it's not bad. But the actual bracelet into the case again, yeah, it's still the same. They still haven't resolved that either and you can tell there's a difference in the colour there between the finishes. Uh, so they still haven't resolved that. So still haven't resolved the misaligned bezel, still haven't resolved the linking to the bracelet. I suppose they're trying to produce an £85 watch uh, and send it out there, but you know, there's other £85 watches out there who do it a lot better than this. As I said earlier on, the reason I got the steel dive just now is to see if they were any better, and I've got a qualified reason for that. I've actually had two of these watches before. Two years ago when Steel Dive started in the UK, or around about that time, I can't remember the exact time, I bought one from Steel Dive UK. They were supposed to be individually checked before they were sent out. And I had to send it back because I had a very badly misaligned bezel and a few QC issues on the bracelet. And I then bought one a few 
weeks later off eBay. Somebody had uh, got a watch and it was nearly new and uh, they obviously decided to dump it and I got it and it had a misaligned bezel and it was running 1 minute 19 seconds fast and I couldn't get it to regulate and I pretty much made a big loss on that watch. Uh, eBay didn't help me out on that one at all. So this is 0 from 3 for steel die for me and that's why I wanted to get it in just to see if all the uh, affirmations and all the, the hype were true on this watch and as far as I'm concerned it's not. They haven't changed and I'm not impressed by this watch at all. And the problem is I've got another steel dive that's just arrived this second and I'm going to be reviewing that shortly as well. But again, I'll just stay on the fence with that one and find out just exactly what's happening. So anyway, this steel dive, 1970, uh, Willard Homage. This particular watch is a bust. It's a zero out of ten and it's not worth anyone's money. I certainly won't be recommending it. And I'll let you all know how the returns process goes on so that you know exactly how Steel Dive are going to treat you when you buy this watch because this is what it's all about. I'm a customer like you. I buy these at full price with my own money. So my money's on the line here too. So this is John from John's Wallace Joint. I'll catch you on the next one. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell. Ta-da for now.